Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mo Glover, playing as a certain G.Y. But we must read about the Irkutsk trials. And we also have a little border war because Cheetah wanted our stuff. We said no. And they actually have up to five divisions here if we actually took a real quick look at them. Oh, Mikhail. Five divisions for, the, for them. But do the defendants admit to the crimes of treason, espionage, wrecking, terrorism, homicide, RAPE, arson, public indecency, and anti-Soviet activities? As a prosecutor aggressively listed off increasingly absurd accusations, one could practically see what little hope had remained in the queues leaving their very bodies. What were once some of the highest ranking bureaucrats in Irkutsk were now decrepit figures standing in before what they would become one of the most infamous trials in the town's entire history. The sad, condemned men gave a meek nod in response to the accusations. They had little strength left in them to resist the inevitable. The court hereby finds the accused guilty of all charges and sentences them to a supreme penalty of execution by firing squad. When those words were said, some men immediately collapsed to the floor and lost a nerve, while others remained standing in cold acceptance of their fate. At, in no time at all, a group of NKVD soldiers entered and began to violently pull the condemned men out of their ad hoc courtroom and further into the depths of the NKVD HQ. As they were led through the claustrophobic basement halls, gunshots and panic yelling could be heard all around them. Poor souls who came before them being served their penalties from the barrel of the gun. Some of the prisoners in the group who were still in a state of despair were being dragged by their shirt collars against the ground, kicking and screaming as they went. If these men were going to heck, this place, this place made it already look childish in comparison. Eventually, the group was led into a nondescript concrete room with no windows and only a single dangling light. Some of the prisoners had pictured many places as their final resting spot, but this glorified bathroom stall was probably the last one they would have expected. The NKVD soldiers ordered the prisoners against the wall and forcefully shoved those who were too hysterical to move. Soon enough, everyone was lined up and ready. P letters of pardon arrive at the last second or open fire. Well, we don't want to increase the influence of the state, and I'll be honest here, at the time of this recording, I'm away from the computer, so I really can't address comments, which I do apologize for, um, but we do want to go with the state, and this increase the party of influence. Oh, something happened. Oh, my finger slipped, but hopefully we can win against Cheeto, against the fascists. The scene was dreadfully similar to the Commissar Krush Kudukov. The distant thumping of artillery, the mud and dirt, the wide-eyed, terrified young souls looking to the commissar for guidance. The only notable difference here is that Kurkov was the one being relied on. I was just like you once, comrades, shaking in my boots, wondering if I would live to see tomorrow. I was there when the fascist dudes invaded our motherland, and I was there when we almost sent them crawling back to their holes. I've seen what cruelties these fascists are capable of in victory, and I've made a promise to myself to never allow such injustices to ever happen again. The commissar got up and stood in front of his men. He could feel the orator inside him taking over. This is not just a war against those who have betrayed the people, but a war against to those to repulse the dark clouds of fascism that loom over everything we hold dear. It is not wrong to feel fear, but it is wrong to allow your fear to shape you. Think of your friends, your homes, your loved ones. Would you stand by as these fascist dogs march in to impose their murderous rule over them? Comrades, put your fear behind you and fill your hearts with rage. Build this anger within you and use it well when the time comes to send those murdering fascist dudes to their early grave. Grudikov's short speech was punctuated by fierce, passionate cheers from the men. For once, the Komosar could see a fire burning in their eyes. Deep down, he wondered how many of them would still be alive after today. Not one step back, though. And we're currently doing Lessons from the Mutiny. If you want to reread that, please go right ahead. But we'll do Lessons from their Spirit. What was the driving force behind the rebellion, comrades? Was it their hopes and desire to the toppling the administration of the Union and superseding it with their own government that had inspired them to revolt? We must take some notes from what gave the rebellious Sablonites the hope to take over and note what we could gain from learning how they had formed their desire to replace the Soviet Union with their flawed system. If we can, if we can ignite that same light of patriotism, not for Solomon, but rather for the people of Russia within the Union, then we have much to gain from this, my comrades. Very true. Anyway, it looks like we did win. Great. There you go. We do have seven divisions. Look at that. Wow. That's not bad. And Lushkov? Politically connected. I don't like him because of that. Defense. Uh, let's go Levin. 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 Something like that. Cool. And 64, 60, 36. So we're going to go ahead and try to get as much influence for the state as possible for now. But we'll see what happens, obviously. And the Verona Conference ends. So be it. Oh, there's something else here? Oh, uh, yes. Persuade the party faction. I don't want to lose this anymore. But we're still close to 65. I want to go and do this one if we can. So... And next up, we will pass another reform, and the jurisdiction that the NKVD possesses shall be increased to grant the units unrestricted freedom to act in frontline operations. We get a new division. That's great. Oh, and Amur is at war with his Cheetah and Magadon. Or at least Magadon. Magadon. Cool. Oh, trans by principality are tactical lessons. You have to admit, Comrade Bulanov, although they were traitors, they sure as heck fought like devils. Field Marshal Mals 
Maslenikov said as he took a sip of his vodka. Indeed, it so puzzles me as to how the heck they managed to find so many men and so many rifles under such a short notice. Ha, huh, just watch your own forces try to mobilize that fast. It would be a gosh darn circus act. A security chief bull enough knew that the field marshal was mostly joking, but he couldn't help in seeing the hints of some uncomfortable truths in his jest. When the mutiny began, the sheer size of Sullivan's army was a cause for great concern amongst both the NKVD and the Red Army's high command. Bolinov recalled that even General Secretary Yagoda himself was deeply troubled by the mutineer's ability to mobilize so quickly in comparison to its own forces. If I had the chance, I'd set about whipping the men back into shape as soon as possible. When the time comes to march against the enemy once more, I don't want to be caught with my pants down yet again, you know. Bolinov nodded in response as he took a drink. You know, Comrade Field Marshal, that Comrade Yagoda had asked me to open inquiries into the Sullivan at war effort. Well, I do not doubt his stalwart bravery all things, I do believe he is still somewhat unconcerned with our forces haven't learned anything from the mutiny. What do you think? Maslenikov stopped to think for a moment. When he spoke again, he did so in a hushed tones. You want to know what I think, comrade? I think that if we were to combine our tactics with all the other mutineers, there would not be a single force from the Urals to the Kamchatka that could hold our armies back. Perhaps it was because he was just a little drunk, but Bulanov began entertaining the thought that Mas Maslenikov's theory might be necessary. Even after he'd stumbled home that evening, Bul... Pavel Bulanov couldn't stop thinking about this discussion with the field marshal. We should focus on our own strengths versus we should always learn lessons, the greatest lessons from of war from your foes, which I'd probably agree with. Uh, party? Yeah, I'll definitely go with this one. Hey, 66, not bad. And we can raid these guys. Now, we just were in a conflict with them. They have five divisions we saw, but they have no manpower, so anything we do, they can't reinforce. So let's go and see the demands. We do have seven divisions, of course. So we shall see what happens. Maybe we will lose this fight, but oh well. Lessons from Sovlin? Well, what Sovlin did was absolutely disgraceful betrayal of what the Soviet Union has stood for. It would be our inner key interest to investigate the policies and possibly gain some benefit if applied. It would be deemed necessary to implement some minor reforms that originated from Sovlin's system in order to increase our popularity amongst his former supporters and make some usage out of the ideas he had fostered. Not a bad idea. They have only two divisions here. They refuse tribute, and we're going to try to beat the crap out of them as fast as possible. We might not be able to win, but it's a risk. It's definitely a risk. If we lose, we're going to lose some political power and such like that, but so be it. Let's get some better artillery. Slowly winning so far. That's actually not too bad. And we're led by... Oh, uh, that's probably why we're winning so far. Because we have a guy with skill 5 attack. That's actually really nice. He's actually Field Marshal. Melanovsky. Thank you. They actually threw another division in. They might be able to throw another one in too. Oh, one of them left. Oh, yeah, they're going to recycle soldiers, aren't they? But any damage you do, they cannot replace, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's scavenge for loot, shall we? We pass reform. Cool. Expand the jurisdiction. Nice. 67 and 33. They're raid successful. And we got an another division. Nice. Uh, for the defense for now, that's fine. Cool. Whatever. Treasure. A relic of the past. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. More equipment, shall we? Yes, we shall. All right. Lessons from their spirit. And it's lessons from Soblin. <clears throat> the spirit of the struggle. What went wrong with him, Maslin and Kof? Uh, you go to ask as he walked, not bothering to look back at the entourage that flanked him. The weekly troop inspection had gone without any notable incident as usual, but this time Yagoda seemed much less impressed than usual. What do you mean, comrade Yagoda? Was there some kind of problem? Maslenikov tried to maintain an air of martial professionalism as he spoke, but his tone betrayed a slight hint of fear. Yagoda stopped and finally looked at Maslenikov in the eye. What do I mean? Did you see them? The boy who sneezed looked like he was about to crap himself. Yeah, let's go get rid of this. I don't want to see this stuff. Perhaps they'll disappoint. Perhaps they fear they'll disappoint you, Comrade Yagoda. Rest assured, the soldiers owe you their utmost devotion and loyalty. Yagoda was still not impressed, and it showed the only reason they're loyal is because they're terrified of me, not devoted. <clears throat> After a pause, the walk continued. Do you remember Sablin's traitors, Maslenikov? Those dudes who were willing to follow that darn boy into heck when I when it came to it? I shudder to think how those frightened souls back there would do in similar circumstances. The group finally arrived at Yagoda's staff car, and the time came for that afternoon's farewells. Make sure the men are in good order next time, Comrade Field Marshal. I will be in touch. After an exchange of salutes, Yagoda departed from the base. The quiet ride gave Yagoda plenty of time to think. He knew that this problem was far more encompassing than just the army. The entire nation saw him as some kind of monster, despite all their efforts to hide these feelings from the public eye. Meanwhile, that dude Salvin had transformed his image into that of a hero virtually overnight. Yagoda wondered if perhaps he should make some kind of attempt at softening his image, however. Yagoda also knew that he could not risk looking weak in these desperate times. By the time Yagoda had arrived at his office, he made up his mind. I'll give them a reason to serve us. I do not expect their love, only their loyalty. And continuing course. 
The safety of our Union was threatened by the revolt of the Sablanites, however. With their fall comes a new opportunity to strike out into our former territory. The time has come to once again set our eyes upon the motherland, and soon we will bring the light of socialist revolutionary power to the proletariat. Only once the East is secured with their righteous fervor might, we shall move deeper and deeper into our lost heartland, and drive the traitors who abandoned the Union back either into retreat or into the ground. With the spirit and guidance of the legitimate leader of the Union, Comrade Yagoda, our failure in the brutal conflict succumbs in your impossibility. The rise of the, Soviet, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics will once again let us stand alone as a shiny beacon in the darkness of this world. I do want to get up to here as fast. I'm not sure if we can get any more stuff over here. And you guys might have already left that in the comments, but I, like I said, I can't really read the comments right now. But uh, we're going to do this as fast as possible. But the party shackled. It's kind of hurting our stability, but whatever. We'll be fine with it. Actually, let's take a look. We need more anti-tank. Artillery. Guns are still looking okay. Oh, not too bad. A traitor's words. Grigori Grinko took a sip of his coffee. His eyes seemed distant. It's interesting to see to see how far the Berots were willing to go for Salvin's ideas. Are our policies really so terrible? It's not like they've changed much since Bukharin's day, and nobody was raising a fuss back then. Sergei Besanov, Yagoda's foreign minister, thought of what to say next. Every so often, the two would meet in unassuming location, locales to discuss things that they would never dare speak of at the workplace, lest they draw the attention of the feared NKVD. Or NKVD. This particular morning, they had found themselves in a sleepy cafe in Irkutsk suburbs, and the subject was dangerously close to becoming more controversial than usual. Basinov seemed to care a little. Gregory, do you think that maybe his promises held merit? Grinko immediately halted, uh, raising his mug as he heard this, and looked up at Basinov. What are you saying exactly, he said, raising an eyebrow. His men were willing to lay down their lives for his ideas. Fought us tooth and nail. We may not like it, but there had to be something worth looking at there. It just wouldn't make any sense otherwise. Grinko resumed his drinking, his posture slackening once more. Eh, maybe. How do we know it wasn't just all talk, though? All you have to do is say the right words, and the people will die for you. Salvin obviously knew that well, but we'll never know if it was coming from a genuine place. Perhaps not, but who's to say we can't succeed where he failed? It will surely go a long way towards endearing us to the people. Kudinko looked up at Besanov again. Most of what Salvin talked about was utopian dribble, nothing more. The truth is, you can't run an effective government on ideals alone, though sometimes I think it wouldn't hurt if we re-examined re how we approach certain issues. Besanov leaned forward. It wouldn't, right? If only Comrade Yagoda would see it that way. Perhaps we could figure something out? An interesting discussion for sure, but alas, nothing can be done. We should forget this conversation ever happened. I like the PP, -pee, but... Wow, they went up by three! That's actually really good, and I forgot about this one too. Cool, let's keep going with land auction, because land auction is super, super important. We actually almost have everyone here at least trained. Or, you know, slightly experienced. Not bad. Oh, and it looks like, right now, on screen, Germany's having their little civil war because, uh, the game is lagging super hard, and, yep, I was correct. Gotta love it. Oh, another... Di wow. Nine divisions. We're actually looking pretty not terrible right now. We I want to make three at a time, but you never know. Can I raid other people? I want to raid Sheet again. It looks like Amur. Amur is not... A, it's a very difficult nation to play as, like I said before, but... That's, it can be a lot of fun. Amur has a... Rajevsky there, the leader of Amur, has a very good story, so... I, I enjoyed his story a whole lot. He has a special flag, too. 15,000 manpower. That's not bad. How many divisions does he have left? Four. Eh, well, good luck, guys. And the world's falling apart because Mr. Hitler's dead. <clears throat> Goodbye, Hitler. Cool. All right, and we'll have soon have more equipment. Oh, what's going on here? Germs of war, so it begins, so be it. Oh, wow, look at all this stuff. Um, there you go. You just close out of it. I don't want to see that stuff. There you go. Boom. Boom. Chaos and Ausland, no one cares. Cool. And there goes Burgund. Oldenstadt Burgund did nothing wrong, right? Cool, and we're almost done with those two. Two weeks left. Wow, that's a long time. Well, that's all right. That gives more time to prepare for ourselves. And actually, how are we doing for society? It's level four, and now it's what here? Oh, they go South Africa. Six. Not bad. That's actually doing pretty darn well. And we got one week left. Uh, can we raid against anybody? We did have the successful raid. Oh, maybe not, huh? Cheetah has to be at peace for this. So once Amur dies, we can raid Cheetah. And they should still be out of manpower, right? No, they got 17 guys. We might be mobilizing more, maybe. They still have five divisions, unfortunately, but... I'm ready to beat them up again. Please let us beat them up. Please, 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 please. Ah, very good. Reclaiming the Union. 
Genrik Hugo had been spending the evening as he usually did, meticulously going over the mountain of reports and dossiers that accumulated in his office that day. On this occasion, however, the task was not as soul grinding as usual, for each report painted small fragments of a much larger optimistic picture. All of Hugo's plans and hard work were finally coming together. One report stated clearly that any lingering Sablonite influence in recruits had seemingly dissipated for good. It seems that all of the investigations of Burgess had borne fruit after all. Even now, Hugo could but help feel a remnants of anger and betrayal when he thought about the foolish exploits of the mutineers and how their brazen defiance of the Union caused them so much trouble. At least now he could take comfort in the fact that they would never trouble him again. After some time, he had finally come to the real meat of the evening's reading. The Red Army's reports on combat readiness, what he saw was all but more promising. Not only did High Command report that the military was so close to recovering all manpower lost during the mutiny, but also that subsequent or organizational reforms were going through without issue. Intermixed were various updates on the NKVD's espionage efforts into neighboring warlord states, and they had all come back with roughly the same conclusion. The fascist forces were hopelessly unable to match Red Army in pitched battle. Once the proper plans of attack had been drawn up, Yagoda anticipated that the coming wars would be merely a tribality, assuming the NKVD's reports were accurate. Landing a cigarette, Yagoda leaned back in his chair and began to think about the future. It was obvious that the war for the interior was coming to a close from this point onward. His efforts would sol almost solely be focused on reclaiming whatever was rustled away from the Soviet Union in its darkest hours. The uphill struggle to take back what was lost would soon begin, and the world will never be the same. Failure is not an option. Restoring our hold. The restoration of the Far East to our Union is paramount before we set our eyes westward to our beloved heartlands. To our East lies the lands of reactionaries and fascists. These are the people who idealize the Russia of old before the revolution. These are people who idealize the very system that brought our proud Union to its knees. This indignity cannot be allowed to stand. Through iron and fire we will show them that we are strong, that we've always been strong. From here to Kamchatka, our beloved socialist ideals will cause the hearts of the proletariat so wrongfully suppressed by the fascist or the false Tsar to soar for the first time in years to this end. The soldiers of the Union must be turned to men of iron. Their weapons must become the instruments of our revolutionary fire. Can you remember just a piece of die, but mission to Alden. Years ago, the partisans led by Gerzap Ocherov in Alden left our ranks with the idea that, it could, that they could survive the waste on their own. To the credit, order has been largely maintained with their little borders. The partisans seem to value their survival and the Sablon is taken care of. We are far better equipped to provide them with security in these dark times than any other power in Russia. That sentiment, including themselves... <clears throat> An envoy should be sent with a message suggesting that the partisans acknowledge or claim over the, their lands and their citizens in returning for friendship, and a part in restoring the glory of the Union. Surely they will understand the gravity and importance of our cause when approached. If not, well, that bridge over a river of their own making can be crossed when necessary. Nice. Better artillery, and let's hit them even harder if we can. Now, we're probably out of arty already, but whatever. We want to make sure we have good stuff here. And it looks like Amur is... Wow, this looks really bad. Are these guys killing each other immediately now? Yep. Darn it, I wanted to raid them. Darn it, darn it, darn it, darn it. It's alright, though. Hey, I got some more stability, though. Or what was it? Stability. Oh, war what I mean. Mission Alden? Well, we'll see what happens. Can we raid against anybody? Peace. You guys don't have any money. Oh, we're not at peace either. God dang it. What was it? Ah, they've been raided. You know what? Night Watch. Yvonne hated watching the border with the Black Army. It was boring, cold, and miserable. At least Yvonne had a useful distraction in the form of his friend Alexander. When Yvonne got particularly bored, he could sat he could at least strike up conversation, so these Black Army guys, they're totally lying about being anarchists, right? Why would you think that? They've got communes, they hate status, and they're insufferable. That sounds like an anarchist to me, Alexander replied, not looking away from the empty tent in front of him. But they have an army, and I thought anarchists hate armies. That steppy guy, or whatever his name is, he's definitely running the Black Army as a junta. It's just a self-conscious junta. Now, these, anis, these anarchists like armies, apparently. The Black Army are totally, definitely anarchists, also. Either way, they're enemies of the Soviet Union, so it doesn't really make much difference to us. I guess that's true. We're still stuck in this tiny hut no matter what. There are still more pressing matters to discuss, such as how these coats are too thin. Oh boy, very cold. Very cold here. Oh man, we would have to wait so long. Can we actually do that more easily, more quickly? Uh, we, I want to wait to see what happens with the child Ulcherov. Because that might give us some more influence. So let's wait maybe a little bit. Uh, the longer we wait though, uh, it's only 2% stability. Uh, it's just sort of more political power though. Ooh. 180 days. Ah, uh, just get... I want to get through it as fast as possible. That's what they say to us, though. I would like to read the people, though. That'd be good. Oh, man. They're at peace. Oh, they're not at peace. I was going to win Cheetah or Magadan. The Algerian War? Um, that's nice, guys. That's nice. It's good to be aware of what's going on, but still. 
11,000 manpower. Getting Alden done and actually under us really quickly would be really good, so we can core their territory as fast as possible. But we have to wait, so a little bit longer. Darn it. Seocracy? Oh, administration's been purged. We still get 1.45 every single day. Not bad, actually. That's pretty good. Pretty darn good. And what do they say? The partisans resist. It's been quite an evening as usual. Genric could go to found himself once again, occupied with reading various reports and simultaneously enjoying a cigarette or two. This time, however, his quiet time had come to a shattering halt when the doors of his office were opened to reveal a slightly frantic Pavel Bulanov. Comrade Yagoda, I just got off the phone with Bessinov, who says the partisans in Alden have sent us a response defying our ultimatum and denouncing his a tyrant. What should we do? Yagoda's eyes returned to his reading. His face did not betray even the smallest hint of concern. How very stupid of them. Ulturov must have a death wish. Comrade Bulanov, tell the field marshal to prepare his troops for war. I wanted to teach those Prudent whelps and Alden a lesson they won't soon forget. Bolinov promptly gave a salute and departed to carry out his mission. When the next morning finally came, the vast array of troops gathered on the doorstep of the partisan territories were ordered to advance, and the storms of war will once again rage all over all of Russian Far East. The Russian Far East. The Red Army marches to war once again. As it should be, then. Strike at the traitors. Alturov and his underlings have shown their lack of sound judgment once again by rebuking the entreaties of, their, of our messenger. He decided not to rejoin the Soviet Union as a brother and comrade in arms against the subversive forces that pillage or rifle homeland. Now we must take steps to liberate their citizens from under their small-minded boots. We must give the weak the protection that these Alden partisans are unable to. Even if the citizens themselves do not believe in the necessity of these steps, we will show them the necessities with their own force of arms. After this, the citizens will be made sure to support us as their hearts cry out to live under the banner of socialism once more whether they realize it or not. Comrade Yagoda has given the order, and thus we march to a song of acclamation and liberation. No trial. Oh, all we can do here about the trial for partisans once we get this one done. Nice. More organization, recovery rate, uh, agricultural methods. Yeah, we don't get that one done as fast as possible. They've chosen incredibly poorly, but no. Ulturov and the upper echelons of his command have been captured and publicly paraded to their imprisonment. The grave crime of betraying the Soviet Union in its time of most dire need must be addressed by our courts. In truth, though, Comrade Goethe has already decided their fate. The trials are a show, but a necessary one. The cases are coming storm that will shake the resolve of the lusts committed among us, but the strength and righteousness of our cause will be maintained through the silencing of their voices. No one may be allowed to subvert the truth of our cause with a rebellion. An example must be made of those who would. A cacophony of gunshots ring through the Irkutsk tonight. The short-sightedness of the so-called survivors have, has doomed them to an early grave. Absolutely. I'm not really worried about this. They have a division. That's it. So, really kind of nice, actually. And then, preparing for the struggle. The final battles lie east of the Soviet Union. The fascists who lie on the coast, the access to the sea, the ports that were stolen from the people, backed by the godforsaken Japanese to the south. But that support no longer exists. That line is severed. People of the Soviet Union begin to prepare. Our destiny awaits, and it sits along the Siberian coast that borders the Pacific. Our land that was taken from the people against their will and be used to fuel the disgraceful operations that fascists are doing. The time the people, this time the people, will remind the fascists where they belong, and the Soviet Union will make sure that they are sure of it. Even if that means we will point a barrel a gun barrel in their mouth to do so. I just time to march east and destroy the fascists once and for all. Just in time to complete this. Nice. Uh, at peace. Not at peace. Cheetah. Oh, Cheetah won. Look at that. Wow, Cheetah actually did win. Yakuti would be nice to raid, but they're getting raided by Cheetah, so we gotta kill Cheetah then. So be it. And if we have any divisions deploying, just go right there. Thank you. The tribe of Ochorov. Gurzab Ulturov somehow knew that this day would come. Here he was, in a hastily put together military tribunal for treason. As a partisan, treason was something that came naturally to Ulturov, and he expected that someday all of his heroics would catch up to him. The prosecutor was still listening off his accusations, but by now they had become only an inaudible blur of muffled sound eventually, though. Ulturov snapped out of his retrospection. Gurzab Ulturov, you are charged with committing treason against the people of the Soviet Union. What do you have to say for yourself? Ulturov was silent for a moment and then looked up at his oppressors. I fought for what I thought was right and don't regret a single thing. Do what you must. The court hereby finds the accused guilty of all charges and sentences him to the supreme penalty. You are hereby sentenced to death by firing squad. The guard seized Ultra by his shoulders and pulled the partisan leader out of the courtroom. He made a nary sound and merely resigned himself to his fate. As Ultra was carried towards his demise, and he thought about all he had done that led up to this moment, and he knew he would do it all again given the chance, the price of defiance. And actually, you know what? I'm glad we did the thing we did down here. Just because uh, we wouldn't have been able to do it anyway, so. And we didn't get any other support, so. It is what it is. Streamline the supply chain? That would not be bad. I would probably want to wait for that. This is not bad either. That's actually really good. Ready the industry, though. Workers of the Union, be prepared. Our final fight of the Far East dawns upon us, a battle of liberating our fellow peers from the grasp of the fascists to the East. While the army will fight them directly, the workers will be the ones to create the tools of war that fuel the fight. 
We need to get everything ready and in order. The production of guns that will be used to kill the enemies of the people must be kicked into high gear. The resources that fuel the production of said guns will need to be extracted and processed. The factories that will house the creation of our weapons. We need every Soviet that is capable of working on the front lines of industry. While the brave men on the front lines against the fascists will fight, the ones who will stay home and work in the factories will contribute to the fight just as much as ones on the battlefield. We get two civvies, two infrastructure, and another milli. Nice. Persuade the party. Oh. Oh, we need to do this one. So persuade the party faction. We're okay. We don't need to do that one. So that's. Oh, I was kind of worrying, wondering what was going on. Hey, 5 out of 20, not bad. Can we get 6 out of 20, maybe? And we're still coring this, so that's actually pretty good. Pass reform, good. Actually, I'll come over here just in case. And we're on that one, cool. I just want to make sure that we did that one. Strengthen the General Secretary's powers, nice. Beautiful. Scamish more loot. The party shackled. The guards stood by the door of the room menacingly, the gun allegedly for self-defense apparent, and the NKVD badge shining on their uniforms. In a loud voice, Hugo had exclaimed that the new proposed decree would entail to the Presidium's deputies. By order of the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet, the following actions will be taken to ensure the safety and prosperity of the Union. Firstly, the offices of General Secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union the and the Premier of the Soviet Union shall be merged. The current General Secretary, Genra Gyagoda, will assume the duties of Premier while maintaining his current position and the powers of General Secretary. Secondly, any votes held on the potential dismissal of Premier Yakov Agronov will be deemed as ineffective owing to his missing at the time of the alleged decision. Karman Konstantin Chern uh, Chernenko thus shall be instated as Commissar of Foreign Affairs while Com Comrade Besanov will be indefinitely removed from his current position. The same faces that were so recently brave enough to stand against Yagoda and his closest allies in the Presidium session now seem obedient and almost terrified. No one dared to respond as they all simply stayed quiet. It was once again the director of the NKBD who had to break the silence. May I assume everyone approves the decree? There was no answer. Then it is in fact from now on here. From now on here, yeah. Not a single deputy had opened his mouth since he go to describe the plan to revert or the reveal plots of the party officials, whose grand plan to climb to power had been shattered in minutes. The new foreign minister, the general secretary's man, was allowed to enter the room again. As for Besanov, he was escorted out by two guards. Needless to say, he was not seen again by his comrades. At least within the walls of the Supreme Soviet, the secret police always comes out on top. Nice. We get Chernenko. Chernenko. Foreign minister, a third time socialist. Very cool. Now I just want to beat up the enemies. But, let's see, dispatch the commissars, uh, streamline the supply chain. Eh, I want to stay this one for as long as possible, so we'll do this one. To fuel the reclamation of our former lands in the Far East, our supplies must be able to get to their necessary locations as smoothly as possible, and ideally without any interruptions or mishaps caused. Could you consider what would happen if our guns went into the hands of would-be betrayer of the revolution? Gather the workers of the Union and get them to work and make sure these instructions are loud and clear. Build the roads that we will drive across. Construct the railroads we will deliver through. Standardize the equipment we will use. Prepare the infrastructure necessary to store supplies. The Soviet Union will gladly thank any comrade in the revolution that helps to fuel the cause further. These distances across Siberia are vast, but with the help of the people, we can make them shorter. Which is great. So at some point, I will stop doing as much... Um, stuff about land auction because we will get bonuses later on so i just want to beat the crap out of these guys i do not like cheetah so zero to man zero manpower five division still we should do relatively okay against them but only if we can go fast enough oh please just want to beat you up man just want to beat you up just come here come over for your your beating please do we have any planes probably not nice Three years. The North Awakens, if you would like to read about that, please go right ahead. May God welcome this wayward soul. Now, we got to prepare for the new threat, which is going to suck. Dispatch the Commissars. Our reclamations of the land we lost may be fast, but we cannot know for sure that the lands we have taken back for the people might contain fellow comrades following the revolution. We need to make sure that the people who live in the land we take back will support us. And if that is not the case, we must send NKVD Commissars into the field to ensure that. Whether it be through violence or uh, peaceful methods, can... The people who reside within our newly regained territory cannot be people who have betrayed the Union. Fascists, monarchists, and Nazis, whatever else the people might have turned to. We need to make sure our lands are filled not with them, but the people of the revolution and of communism. We do get another 1,000 manpower, which is nice. And we do get more defense, which will come in handy against men. Because men, the debuffs he gives us, not super bueno. Just not super bueno. But we do have 11 divisions. That's pretty awesome. We do have barely enough infantry equipment. We have some motorized equipment. Support equipment's not very good. And... Uh, artillery is not terrible, but still. Streamline the su supply chain? Yes, please. And, oh, Divine Mandate. Oh, Sokka? Oh, we can do Sokka. I want to do Sokka. Since we're here anyways. 
Uh, actually, how strong is it, Mandate? I don't mind beating up their forces. 8,000 manpower, 6 divisions. Uh, they shouldn't be too bad, but let's do Saka. They're almost a guaranteed victory. Dispatch of Komasars. Not one step back. To the brave Soviets spreading the revolution back to the areas under the filthy fascists. Remember, this is the fight the Union is not ready to lose for the glorious revolution to succeed and for the will of the people to prevail above all others. Not a single step back will be permitted. No retreats. Do not let the fascists of the Far East win. We, the people, are ready to throw as much as we can at them, just to prove that the revolution is not the right bear to be messing with. If this means we are sending our men to die in the fields of Siberia, then these men will be remembered as heroes of the Union, the ones who brought justice and liberated the workers suffering under the fascists and helped to restore the Union closer towards our former glory. I mean, you do get more, that's actually really nice, more entrenchment. I, I like that a lot. What? 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 Screw it, we'll do these guys then. Cheetah's gotta die. I wanna kill Cheetah super badly now. The Far Eastern Campaign. Finally, with our industry prepared and our men ready to die for the good of the revolution, there's only one step left. Advance, move forward, soldiers of the Union. Our test begins against the fascists to the east. Show them no mercy and slaughter them all. March forward into their houses of cards and knock them all over. Kick the front doors of each and every one in and shoot the owners in the head. The revolution returns to the Far East and we are ready to be here to stay. The people will show how... Show, and we'll, the people will show how they prevail without the need of turning to such disgusting ideologies and remind them about how glorious Russia needs to be under communism. Uh, we should already be there, right? We wanted to go to war with them. Which is actually really good for us, so... No. And then we'll do that too. Nice. Oh, Cheetah. I hate Cheetah. And we're going to win. The enemy's defeated. And now we should go to war with them and they're going to pay the tribute. Nice. Let's do research facility. Something different this time. And we've got some more research done. Nice. So here, we're going to save this stuff for later. Uh, actually, we'll get strategic cycles and then save the other stuff for later. That'll be okay then. Not one step back. The Far Eastern Campaign. Nice. If we could take out these guys fast enough, that'd be really nice. Oh, but they had to go to war with Kamchatka first. So we... I don't know who we'll go, be able to go to war with, so... It might actually be these guys, because I think the Divine Mandate has to go to war with Kamchatka first. We got a lot of peepee. -pee. Nice, not bad. Not too bad. And here we are. If you'd like to read about the sins of our roots, please go right ahead, which hurts our stability, but this is just because of the divine mandate of Siberia. The Far Eastern Campaign. You go out and looked on with interest, as his generals made plans on the large map that represented the Russian Far East. The base of the map itself was from the forwardies, and had been hastily drawn in over marker, or drawn in marker, to show that the Red Army believed to be the strategic situation. As you can see, comrades, the fascists are divided and weak. We shouldn't have asked for a better opportunity to strike. Field Marshal Lushkov said as he gestured towards the enemy positions on the map, represented with lines of red marker. Lushkov was not wrong in telling the situation farther east was not exactly ideal, but it all seemed to suggest that the fascist warlords were too busy squabbling amongst themselves to offer any serious resistance to an invasion. Yagoda, his attention still focused on the map, spoke up. Lushkov, how ready are our forces? Lushkov backed away from the map and turned to Yagoda. As ready as I'll ever be, comrade Yagoda. Then I think, comrades, it's time to put our plans into motion. These fascist dogs have blighted Russia with their toxic presence for too long. It would bring me great pleasure to see them crushed like the vermin they are. You get a pause for a moment. Remember that this is a very important step towards reunification, comrades. First we take the Far East, then we liberate the rest of Russia and beyond. I will not accept failure, and when the fate of the Soviet Union still lies on the precipice, you go to short speech would resonate heavily with all who heard. The next few months would see the lands of the Far East drenched in blood and with a great deal of effort and a little luck. Only the true heirs of the Soviet Union would remain, standing once the smoke had cleared. You go to and make sure of that. The road to victory will be paved with blood. Beautiful. Ah, continues on, yes. Operation Neptune? Ah, oh, that'd be nice. I want to go to war as fast as possible with these guys. Operation Uranus. For the Union to begin flourishing again. We require sea access once more, and what better way to regain our access than to march east and eliminate the threats that reside along the coastline? The people require their access to the coast of Siberia and the fresh air of the Pacific Ocean so that we may export the revolution's influence further, while also gaining the ability for some import of necessary materials, if need be. Our men industry are ready, and we must begin to draft our plans for Operation Uranus. It's a simple task. Eliminate the army of the eastern opponents, walk in and take it back for the revolution, and capture their leader. We've done... After we've done as much... We can restore the old oblasts of before right where they belong, back into the hands of the people, and the eastern threat completely eliminated. Nice. Uh, who's here? A third despotism? Gurko? Huh. And then Operation... was this one? Oh, the Operation Merida. Oh, well, these guys don't exist. If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Um, actually, we still might be able to do this one, so... And if you want to read about o Operation Umbrio, please go right ahead as well. But, Operation 
area. The state of Chida sits to our east and occupies territory that possesses vital resources to our needs. The solution is obvious and simple. Prepare the people's army, prepare our guns, and march towards them and go to war. It seems that they need a reminder on how the revolution always prevailed over the Russian monarchy, and so we must take initiate Operation Ariel. The time has finally come to take back our rightful lands and confront the monarchists hoping to restore the Tsar. Well, of course, once it's done, too. Oh, this one auto completed, too. So if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. And a Shining Bright, which... Shining Bright, oh. Well, we'll get there eventually. Uh, I guess these guys... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, this is a little worse. We do have 12 divisions, though, which is actually really quite good. So We'll go in as fast as possible, and these guys are literally out of manpower completely at this point. Nope, never mind. They have 7,000. They have 8 divisions now. Wow, that sucks. Operation Ariel, though. Against the fascists. The scene was dreadfully similar... Uh, familiar to Komisar Krukov. The distant thumping of artillery, the mud and dirt, the wide-eyed, terrified young souls looking to the commissars for guidance. The only notable difference here is that Krukov was the one being relied on. <clears throat> um, actually, did I read this one? Not one step back. Yeah, I've already read this one, so... If you want to read this again, please go right ahead. Cool. 2nd July? Well... Operation Pluto? Well, I guess we can read this one. Second July. The Tsars have cheated. While they may not be as evil as the fascists and Nazis of the world, they are still a roadblock in the revolution. But the monarchy always leads to the will of the people taking over the country, just like how the people did in 1922. Mikhail's government will be put on trial for betraying the revolution and running back to those sad ideas such as monarchism, and we will not be treating them any differently as than we did the Romanovs back then. As for Mikhail, he, he, we will be giving him a special trial. Down in the basement under the court, court he goes, with the barrel of a gun pointed at the back of his head, and with the fire of the gun, Mikhail is finally the Tsar of Russia he wished to be. Cool, let's go in immediately. You guys go in here, actually. Cut, cut off the capital. If you cut off the capital, they can't do anything. Quite literally. And they're cut off. Beautiful. Take everything, take everything, take everything, take... Yep, take all the stuff, too. Good. And we should have victory everywhere. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Boom. Cheetah is ours now. Okay, now they got their supplies back. The capital is probably Magadan. They probably cord that, actually. And it'll just be us versus the Divine Mandate. Which could be worse. Oh, they got all the way up there. Wow, look at that. Interesting. If you'd like to help out here, that'd actually probably be quite swell for us. So we've lost 1,000, maybe? Four, oh, no. 4,000 versus 17,000. That's not too bad. We only have so much manpower, though. We, we, we must remember that. Pass reform is done. That's good. That's gone. And you're still for skull of war attack. That's not bad. No other resources here though. Hmm. How many divisions do they have now? Six. We only killed off a few of them. That's not good enough though. That's good. Why don't you guys go in there too? Ah, you guys aren't winning, but you're losing on... Huh. Alright then. Interesting. Now we're slowly winning. Good, now you're helping out the attack there too. Very good, very good, very good. Keep going, guys. Even though it's kind of a grind, I shouldn't be doing it like this. Whatever. It'll be alright. We'll be able to core the territory hopefully soon-ish. They've lost 20,000. They cannot keep this up. They can absolutely not do this. Especially when you get all your land auction done. But apparently land auction doesn't mean too much, apparently. I doubt these guys did any of their land auction too, so. Are they almost dead yet? Come on, man. Come on, they should be dead by now. Uh, we do need to take all the victory points, so we'll do that one too. There you go. And head on down here. Keep going, keep going. You're doing fine, you're doing fine. Don't worry about it. Any losses enemies are taking are losses well worth it. Oh, we got them. Cool. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. I thought they would capitulate a little faster than that, but oh well. And time for the Divine Mandate. 2nd July. Up next, let's do Shining Bright, so we can get this slightly decreased scoring time as well. No mercy for Nazis, though. Rajevsky, the Banner King, the leader of the now former state of Amur, betrayer of the Russian people, and now merely nothing but a rat under the thumb that represents the will of the people under the revolution. We cannot let the trial for Rajevsky's government go in their favor in any way, no matter how minor we let it. No. 
We will not allow the fascists to breathe for another day. We are the people of Russia, the Union. I dare say we show absolutely no mercy to the former government of Amur. We will make sure that absolutely no one leaves the trials without punishment. If Rajevsky pushes his luck too far in the trial to prove his whatever non-existent innocence he might claim, the thumb that represents the will for the revolution and for justice for Russia will crush the skull with that same thumb. So one for some. A trial of the false star. Mikhail II. False claimant to the long dead Russian throne and staunch monarchist, you are fully admit that you have betrayed the revolution of Russia and you are fully responsible for the deaths of every man the Soviet Union has lost on the battlefield. You've been proven to be guilty and are now sentenced to the supreme penalty. You will be shot. Mikhail slowly nodded, his hands tied together and grabbed by the back of the neck of by an NKVD commissar, forcing Mikhail to come with him as he is led to the back room behind the court and down a flight of stairs. Mikhail was violently thrown down and we winced in pain, hitting the concrete floor and scrambling up into his knees, looking up at the agent. The commissar prepared. His revolver and spun the barrel, which made a motion with his finger for Mikhail to turn around, which he begrudgingly complied, tears forming in his eyes. Do you have any last words, Mikhail? Mikhail gulped and softly sobbed to himself, looking down to the floor and closing his eyes tight, feeling the barrel of the gun nudged against the back of his head. I just want Mikhail to get a bit to cry some more. The NKVD commissar begin, began to grow impatient, waiting for Mikhail to speak his final words, and this was the end. I just want to go back home, where I belong. He stayed there on his knees with his gun still pointed at his head. Without hesitation, the commissar pulled the trigger. Just like Nicholas II of the Romanovs, Nicola Mikhail was shot and killed. Dropped to the floor with a bullet through his brain, bleeding out. He finally became the Tsar he wanted. Not, though not, as he imagined. Oh boy. Oh well. Oh, raids? Let's do it. I want to weaken them as much as possible, even if that hurts us. Maybe, I don't know. They have a lot of manpower. They have only one factory, though, so that's not really good for them. And most of the divisions are probably near here and near Kam Kamchatka, too, so... So, any anyway, rate we do, hopefully we'll go okay. Maybe we'll see what happens. Our guys are actually doing okay. We have no manpower. We actually have a ton of guns, an anti-tank now, motorized. Wow, we're actually looking not too bad. We're looking actually pretty darn good, I'd say. And get rid of that one too, that's fine. We have 13 divisions, which should do okay against these guys. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully they say no. Games, cool. And Kim Robo, oh, oh god, Kim Robo, oh no, 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 no. 14 divisions, not bad. But Kim Robo, no, please. Uh, Quit making divisions. we got to save as much manpower for now as possible. I mean, we'll get some more, don't get me wrong, but still. And let's do schools, since we're not improving schools yet. So we'll get schools done. we got this one going. we got a lot of mechanization. we got a lot of industrial expertise. Shining bright, though. And Rojewski is next. Mo no mercy for the Nazis. Cool. And we get, we're going to save this stuff for later on, so we don't really need it for now. Uh, let's keep improving artillery. I love improving artillery. Should we, and they paid the tribute. Great! And we got the PP. Um, okay, well, they just gave us tribute, and now they demand it back. Okay, enemies defeated. Nice. The end of the Whites? Yes. The Whites, not content with the first loss of the Red Army, decided to avenge themselves on the people of Russia with the aid of fascist foreign powers. For well over a decade, they ravaged the Far East, installed corrupt, thuggish governments that brutalized the working class. That era is now over. We, the Soviet Union's rightful successors, purged them just as fiercely as their predecessors purged the first generation. If you'd like to read about the words lore for all to hear, please go right ahead. This kind of hurts us all. With the region finally free of their talent, or their taint, we can finally begin reorganizing and integrating their territories, bringing back the old provincial boundaries and setting up local governments. We will make it almost as if the harsh use of fascist rule had never happened in the first place. Beautiful. Yeah, this really sucks. Consumer goods recovery rate, war support goes way down, damage garrisons goes up. I hate it so much. But it is what it is. I was building new schools, which is nice. Yeah, Grand Principal, these guys are not going to be easy to beat. Oh my goodness. But our GDP is looking okay. Alright, well, they were raiding us, so the Trav Rojevsky. Go in. Go immediately in. No peace. No stopping here. Actually, oh yeah, this too. Nice. Let's continue with uh, defense book stuff. But the trial of Rojevsky. Konstantin Rojevsky, leader of the Russian Fascist Party. You have. The prosecutor struggled to get a word in as he attempted to pronounce a fascist demagogue sentence. Rozevsky was practically foaming at the mouth throughout the entire trial, shouting unspeakable expletives and rude ins insinuations about the court's parentage. You Bolshevik pigs think you can put me down? I'd piss on your trial, you dudes. That'd be funny if you actually said dudes. The prosecutor had run out of patience and raised his voice to speak over Rozevsky's angered ramblings. Oh, to heck with us, guards. Get this animal out of here and kill him already. Nearly half a dozen NKVD guardsmen converged on Rojevsky and began to drag him out of the court. Their prisoner was hysterical and uncooperative the entire trip, and by the time they had reached the basement, Rojevsky was still fiercely ranting about Jews and Bolsheviks. The group abruptly stopped in the basement hall, and the commanding officer turned to his comrades. Someone give me a rag or a handkerchief or something. We need to shut this idiot up. 
One of the NKBD officers then wandered off to find a suitable object and soon returned with a cloth. As the soldier attempted to gag Rodjeski, however, the prisoner headbutted the soldier and began violently shaking and kicking. In this state, moving the prisoner was impossible. Rodjeski was such, in such a rage that he nearly managed to overpower his captors, despite their numbers. You are weak. I can take all of you Bolshevik sons of... Before the verbal circuit could continue, a bullet ripped through the side of Rodjeski's head and killed him instantly. The now silent corpse of the infamous fascist leader slipped through the NKVD and flopped to the gr floor with a thud. Well, that's done. End of the whites. And now we're, we're... I'm not really too worried about these guys, maybe. Ooh, millies, yes. We want more millies? More planes. I want to get as many planes as possible, but do that. Oh, wow, that's going to be a lot of cats. Oh, wow, that's a lot of fires and cats. We must have cored Magadon, too. Beautiful. We're going to need a lot of this, though. We're going to need a lot of this as well. A little bit more of that. And a lot of that, too. Hey, some dockyards, not bad. Oh, convoys. We love convoys. Cool. You know what? I'm going to leave this up to the AI to do it. This, that's a probably really bad thing to say, though, but the end of Mankowski. Our fight for the Far East has subsided at the moment. Mikhail Mankowski and his fascist followers fought like cornered rats, but the streets of Magadan are now strewn with their bodies. At the moment, Mankowski himself is alive in custody. That shall, of course, soon change. The leaders of the Russian fascist party will receive a trial befitting their betrayal of the Russian people. The prospective verdict and sentence are obvious, but the punishment of these traitors will be a fine example to anyone who even entertains their ideas. Anyone who puts the Soviet Union in jeopardy will be hunted down with prejudice and given an exactly what they deserve. Beautiful so far. Losses. 400 versus 3,000? Not enough. Not enough. Followed up with what? Operation Pluto. The divine mandate to the north as a sham to the Russian people and a block in the road for the revolution. However, this does not mean that we cannot deal with the issue. All they own is Siberian ways. This will make our job dealing with these religious fanatics much easier. We can simply knock on the door of whatever small building they have and point a gun at their leader's head and they'll immediately surrender to us. The Soviet Union will be glad to accept the people under the mandate back into the revolution and to eliminate whatever small threat they may hold against us. It surely can't be that difficult to defeat some extremist worshippers holding around a church. Well, you never know. Yeah, more loot, yes, please. Now we're struggling a little bit more, but that's fine, whatever. It is what it is. You guys get down here. We cut up all the other people, so. Not bad. End of Matkovsky, the trial. Mikhail Matkovsky, leader of the Russian Fascist Party. You have been found guilty of the crime of treason against the Soviet Union and several thousand counts of murder. The court sentences you to the supreme penalty of execution by firing squad. Mikhail Matkovsky, now a ragged figure, still tried his best to maintain a somewhat dignified posture. I understand. Those who were, who were present noted that he seemed strangely calm and collected through the whole ordeal. In a few minutes, a single NKVD guard <clears throat> pulled Mikoski by his collar and led him out of the courtroom. Once they had reached the basement door, the guard knocked on the door to be let in. He sighed and stood in front of the door idly, wondering why they hadn't just left it open. The guard's thoughts were interrupted by a sharp blow to the side of the head. As the guard fell to the floor, Mikoski scrambled to grab his keys. The guard was unable to react before Mikoski had freed himself and made a run for it. Wasting no time, he sprinted off after Mikoski, and soon the guard was joined by several of his comrades. The NKVD followed Mikoski as he slipped into the men's bathroom, and, easily, and they easily broke through the haphazard barricade he made with his shackles. When they entered, the NKVD off soldiers were immediately met with Mikoski attempting and failing to open a locked window as at the end of the bathroom stalls. Realizing that he was trapped, Mikoski gave up and turned to his pursuers. He gave a defeated sigh and called out to them, Well, get on with it. The NKVD obliged and several bullets struck Mikoski in the chest. He slumped to the floor, and within seconds, the fascist leader was dead. Slippery dude. I apologize for my fast reading. I'm just kind of excited to kind of read through all this stuff, so. After that, the war against the demagogue? That'd be nice. The war for peasantry? Yeah, I like that one, too. Well... We'll see what happens. It seems our plans to combat the mandate has caused some issues. As we have some peasants sympathetic to the cause of men revolting against us, this is troubling for the stability of the Soviet Union. We cannot sit around and let these peasants spread their religious ideals around the Soviet Union. We must deal with this immediately before they get out of hand than they already are, or else we could risk losing all of our efforts being not in us collapsing in on ourselves, and we cannot let the fire of the revolution be extinguished. We need a plan as soon as possible, ideally, to deal with the problem and to avoid another issue like Sublin. Absolutely. But in the meantime... Oh, we got encircled. God dang it. You piece of garbage. This, this is what happens when you let the AI do things. You have to go right here immediately and liberate these guys. And force attack if need be. Operation Pluto. Nice. You should be able to break through here. Uh, go through here. You know what? Screw it. You guys force the attack. Kill them all off. Um, We'll see what happens. Actually, we, oh, just another revolt. That's not bad to do. Uh, requires all the following. Oh, Chernitsky will require all the following. Eh, we'll see. Well, cancel. Oh, well, we'll see what happens. I don't want to read anything else until we get things done here, so. And let's do some more workers. Actually, expertise, how's expertise doing? Not very well. Let's do that. workers. How many men have we lost? 2,000 versus 8,000? That's not terrible. Go to Amalan. Over here should be extremely good. 
You guys are taking forever to do anything. Get, go over there, guys. Go. Come on. Letting the AI do things is just, uh, just a huge mistake. I wonder if we can complete this war before it... Oh, we won't be able to get it done. Guys, are you moving in or what? Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. But, under the peasants... Now nah, we've got to do this one, probably. Uh, modify peasant uprisings. The war against the demagogue. Let's get more PP if we can. Comrades, let us observe the tactics of the forces of men. They have lived in the Siberian wastes and have expert knowledge on how to fight and survive in the heck hole they defend with their lives. We need to take some hints from how they fight us and learn from them. Even if their ideology is insane, their skill at war and the waste is something to be acknowledged. The Soviet Union soldiers must adapt to this new hostile environment where infrastructure is non-existent and the supporters of the mandate could have, ad have an advantage over us if we were to not be too careful with how we tread. Our tactics must change to be more accommodated with the waste to ensure that victory can be ours and we show these fanatics the true only path to Russia, revolution. Come on, they're not that difficult to kill off, guys. And not you guys, but like, our soldiers are kind of garbage. We lost a... What? What? No. Are you kidding me? Come on. Kill them off. Kill them off. I will not lose this war. I swear to God. That pisses me off. That pisses me off a lot. Go, 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 go. Kill them off. Come on. That is insanely stupid. They just rise up soldiers down there. Man, that pisses me off. But if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. That should never have happened. Never, ever, 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 ever should have happened. I hate how we can just do that. I really hate that so much. Kill them off. Uh, we, oh, we actually have to do this one, huh? Oh, well, got this one. Commissars in the field. Comrades, why would our own people turn to these ideals? This is outrageous. We must deal with them both force. If it is time to utilize the resources that that we resources we can that aren't be, being used in the war against the divine mandate, we must turn to the NKVD for help. We must send out the NKVD commissars to deal with the people that have betrayed the Soviet Union and gain sympathy for the father men, and directly confront them, whether it be with interrogating their words or with a gun to their head. The commissars may not enjoy the task, but, however, it is a necessary job to do. We need to ensure the peasants do not continue to turn to the people of the fanatics and stay where they should be as part of the as parts of the revolution. Just another revolt. The revolt of the peasants and the Soviet Union have turned in support for men and his followers is nothing new to us. And we have crushed the revolt of Soblin and his followers already, and we will crush yet another. March forward, comrades. The peasants who have turned to the Manet's ideologies are nothing more than mere betrayers of the revolution and of Russia. We will wipe them out, just like how we did destroy Father Men and support base, and assert our dominance over the Far East. Civilians of the Union, continue business as per usual. This revolt is nothing special and will be easily wiped out. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Screw that, man. Uh, you guys, how strong are these guys? They're probably very strong. Uh, actually, no, only up to 11 divisions. That's a crud ton of manpower, though. Wow. I don't think we should do this one. Ooh, we have no manpower as well for now. Um, are these guys any good, maybe? No. Eh, 15. These guys are actually 15 already. These guys do have military police on them, but we don't really want military police on our guys, so. These guys are all elite infantry, huh? Well, actually, no, you know what? Screw it. Let's, let's use nothing but elites. It's going to cost a little bit more, but that's all right. We'll go 40s. And that's fine with us. Boom, and then boom, and then boom, er, good. He knows. Boomer, he knows. Um, let's go with. Eh, nothing here yet. I get some recon maybe to start off with. That's fine. And oh, which one? Which one did I just edit? Was it this one? No, was it was it this one? Cool. There you go. Convert them with the whatever equipment we have, which was obviously not enough. And we will store the Soviet Union as soon as we can. But I don't get to this focus tree. Part first. So, back in the USSR. Today, a fantastic milestone by the people of the Soviet Union was achieved. The Union has rightfully reclaimed its land in the Far East, and a red banner flies high. The power of the people triumph over above all once more, and the Russia is reminded that the revolution is the only way forward for the USSR. Yet, this is just our first step to reclaiming our name on the world stage. Celebrate as much as you want, comrades. But soon enough, it'll be time for us to march west and retake Russia from the ones claiming ownership of the Union. Whatever beliefs that they may have turned to, the revolution will remind them of the glory the Union had, and we will crush them. Yes. That'd be good. Let's get that one done, and then we'll do the rest of our focuses, too. I really wonder if we could do this. I mean, it won't really do much for us, but still, whatever. Well, our guys are looking extremely weak. We have no manpower, not enough equipment, not nearly enough of anything except motorized. Which, actually, we could probably increase the motorized size as well right now. I never use motorized anti-air. Is it worth using? Let me know in the comments below if you guys actually use motorized anti-air. 
Give it a little more time. I want to get to this focus a little bit more first. And then... If it doesn't go well, we could probably cancel it, right? Let me try it. Alright. Well, we still might win anyway, since they have no divisions on the line there. Which is good for us, so... Nice. I do want to get more political power every single day. It's going to be super, super worth it. We could scavenge for loot, but that's going to take too long. Uh, let's finish off this with battle first, and then we'll go ahead and do what we need to do. Come on, can we just end the battle? There's no one there. These guys are trying to get in there, but they're just there's literally no one there. And they're going to be able to get in there. Uh, at least we'll be, be able to beat them up. Nice. I wish we could do that, but whatever. Let's go ahead and do this. The Union of the Soviet Socialist Republics. Nice. And get another research slot, which is really good. We do get overextended administration, which sucks, but whatever. Nice. All to the defense of the motherland. There you go. Train. Because we're going to need it. And up next, it is 65. Let's grab some of this. We have done not very much for our focus tree, uh, for our industry, but whatever. And it's going to do, yes. Equipment. Agriculture, we got enough PP for this anyways. Uh, do that, it's fine. Everything needs to get improved. Everything. Army professionalism, that one's okay. We don't really need to do, eh, we could probably use that, honestly. Stability, though. Actually, yeah, we'll grab some more stability for now. This one is better, and more war support, too. Beautiful. Maybe give it a day, and then the Union Triumphant. The room was silent. The podium atop the stage was empty, and the flags behind it stood firm. The glorious red banner, the flag of the revolution, had reminded the parties of who Ukrutsk were. The Soviet Union in its purest form. The room somehow went even more silent as you go to walked up on stage and stood behind the podium, adjusting the microphone silently, silently before beginning to speak. Comrades, soldiers of the revolution, everyone under the Soviet Union, today is a glorious day for the people of the Far East and Russia, as we have fully liberated the region and its inhabitants from the shackles. The power of the people has been shown to the triumph, to, to be triumphant over all others, and the Union stands with its red banner flying high above all others. The soldiers of the Soviet army gathered all around the hall which came to clap, and slowly the crowd cheered in celebration at first, comrades embracing each other proud of their victory. It is time go out drink party, it is time of celebration. The day of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics finally returns to the world stage, where it rightfully belongs. We have shown the revolution triumphant once more. People began to cheer louder, applause growing in volume and the occasional cheer for you go to himself, but the soldiers stomped their boots in, onto the cold wooden floor to remind everyone to keep quiet for now and let the leader speak. But that is not the end of our liberation of Russia, my comrades. Soon we will march west. We will stomp out any fascists, any monarchists, and anyone who does not support the revolution. This is only the beginning. For now, it is time to party, go, and be free. The people cheered once more, louder than ever, as bottles of vodka and other liquor were popped open, and people drank wildly, stumbling out of the streets to party. It was truly a day to experience. You could not help but crack a smile as he watched the people cheer for him and for the Soviet Union. Next up, the West. Oh, we can do all sorts of this stuff immediately. Home of the revolution? The Soviet armed forces would be not bad. The revitalized economic plan, I would really like to do that immediately, but I want to get rid of everything else here. Ooh, Patch of Siberia. That's not, that's actually not bad. I like that extra pee, -pee but the motherland resurgent first. Through these years of struggle, despite countless setbacks, enemies, and challenges of the true government, heir to that of the Soviet Union is resurgent. We've clawed back a path to victory from defeat, bringing back a sizable portion of land under the rightful stewardship of our very vanguard. While we, while records such as Salvin's rebels had tried their hardest to stop the return to greatness, it is with great honor that we announce that the motherland is back and stronger than ever. In the road ahead, there will be challenges, there will be turmoil, by the end of this, there will be great prosperity as the Union is restored under the watchful protection of the NKVD. There is no turning back now. It's a total reunification of Russia, and there's not no turning back at all. Beautiful. And food for the hungry, great! More political power, stability, war support, awesome, awesome, awesome. And let's go and build up some roads if we possibly can, and build a lot of civvies first. And then roads. Oh, beautiful. All the territory. Must be that. And right now, spend like crazy. And actually, for us, um, I'm going to leave military spending alone. I don't really want to hurt everything like that. So go and spend all that stuff. We need as much city building as possible, so. And extend the administration. Poverty. Ooh, poverty benefits for the people. That looks really not bad. Continue. Yagod... Yagod's China? Huh. 
Let's extend the administration first. As we reclaim more and more land for the motherland, our administration struggles to administer those liberated territories. To accommodate this, we will have to extend our political administration to allow us to properly restore Soviet rule to these lands. The restoration of Soviet methods of rule, such as the creation of Soviet's collectivization, the creation of infrastructure for taxation, as well as the movement of men and material, will be all be made easier with an extended administration. With a well-administered base in a corner of Russia, it will provide a solid base of operations for the liberation of the rest of our glorious nation under the banner of the true heir of the Soviet Union. Onward towards Russia. Russia's rebirth. And now we're really going to be focusing on building up our industry. So much more. Uh, we could get that, but a oh, billion's not bad. That's like, that's, that's like nothing, so. Not to worry about that at all. So we'll get this one done, and we'll read one more and read of the event after that. And I do want to do benefits for the people. The liberation of Russia is not just a list of cities. It is the people that we free from fascist and reactionary oppression. Therefore, it is important to us that the people we liberate from tyranny that are reminded that they have been liberated, as they must feel it themselves for it to be a real liberation. Due to the great importance, we must take action to better the lives of citizens living under our control and give back to our people. The people are and always have been our number one main priority, as is their safety. The NKVD will remain a vital part of our administration and will ensure their safety and security is maintained. Glory to the motherland. American industrial assistance arrives. If you want to read about this, please go ahead. This, this happens sometimes, depending on what the Americans do, so that's actually really good for us. We will match our industrial might one day. Oh, wait. Uh, and we want to do this one too. Cool. A new shipment arrives. If you want to read about that, please go ahead as well. This also is the CIA helping us out. So great! The return of the Soviets. Just a few weeks ago, or a few years ago, the Presidium of the Supreme Soviet Administration hardly extended past the city limits of Irkutsk. That is until General Secretary Yagoda liberated a full third of our Union from the bandits, fascists, traitors, and clerics that occupied it. Our status as a true revolutionary vanguard of the Soviet people has been affirmed as all other threats, and the Far East have been stomped out under the march of history. The Russian proletariat can rest assured that the two heirs to Lenin and Bukharin shall restore the glory and freedom which wish they lost to the Nazi menace. But our work is still unfinished. There are still many menaces to the West who we must deal with. Having grown beyond the status of a world lord, we are now a fully functioning state and must develop our nation accordingly. We will have to make great investments into bringing our country up to the standards of the developed nations of the world, and we will now be able to stake on its national debt in order to finance our expansion. Our people cry out for help, and the restoration of our union awaits them. From this point on, we will not take one step eastwards for Soviet Russia, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I will see you tomorrow as we will continue and march westwards to reclaim Russia. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.